next up, uh, we're going to talk about Section 3. Uh, my own personal opinion is that Section 3 is best uh, introduced after Section 5. Uh, that's what I think, but uh, I will just... Uh, so maybe watch the Section 5 video before you watch this section's video. Um, but, all right, uh, let's get started anyway. Uh, we will call the collection of, of uh, random variables x1 to xn a random sample if it consists of iid random variables. We will call any quantity we can compute from a random sample a statistic. And before a data set is observed, a statistic is a random quantity with its own distribution. And we call the distribution of a statistic the sampling distribution. So statistics in this random state are usually referred to using uppercase letters as we've been generally referring to uh, random variables so far. And yeah, so that's uh, still the case. Uh, that said, when we write a lowercase letter, we're often referring to uh, the observed statistic that was actually computed in the sample. Okay, so some examples of statistics include well you have the sample mean uh so this is one such statistic uh in fact a lot of time will be spent uh discussing the uh statistical properties of the sample mean uh there's also the sample median that is in fact a statistic okay so and uh, we could talk about say the sample variance uh and we could talk about, say, um, the uh, sample standard deviation. That's also a statistic. So, so that's something else that we could uh, look at. So uh, statistics, when they're computed from random numbers, are themselves random, which means we can talk about the distribution of a statistic. We can talk about the expected value of a statistic. We can talk about the PDF or the CDF of a statistic, the parameters of the distribution of a statistic, a statistics variance, and so on. And we will, in fact, talk about such things. So let's start out with an example. Let x1 to xn be iid random variables, and uh, every, every one of them uh, follows a Bernoulli distribution with parameter p, what is the sampling distribution of x bar? Let's describe x bar's distribution. So we'll say that t, oops. Uh, so t will be the sum from i equals one to n x i. And the distribution of this, this is the sum of n independent and identically distributed Bernoulli uh, um, random variables, what are what is their distribution? Well, what this effectively does is adds a one for every one of these Bernoulli random variables that comes up. So what this statistic T does, since you're adding up random variables that are one and zero, it's counting the number of ones in the sample. Okay. And what, uh, and also each one of these, uh, can be thought of as independent flips of a coin because a Bernoulli random variable can be thought of as a coin flip. And all of these coins are independent because I said this is an independent and identically distributed sample. So what random variable counts the number of successes when you flip a coin n times and each of those coin flips are independent? Well, that's going to be a binomial random variable. So this sum follows a binomial distribution and the parameters of the distribution are going to be n because we've got n of these flips and p because the probability of a single success, which is going to be that one of these Bernoulli random variables is going to be one, is going to be p. So this is t and t is equal to n times x bar, where x bar is the sample mean. So the implication of this is that n times x bar is following a binomial distribution uh, with parameters n and p. So what does that say about the distribution of x bar? Well, 
It says it's essentially a scaled binomial distribution. So the probability that x bar is equal to little x, you may recognize this as being essentially the probability mass function for x bar. Uh, that's going to equal the probability that n times x bar is equal to n times x. Uh, and this is going to be n choose nx, uh, p to the power nx, and then 1 minus p to the power um, n times 1 minus x uh, for if, if, the, if it is the case that x is one of the numbers 0, 1 over n, 2 over n, uh, all the way up to uh, n over n, which is 1. So x bar is uh, going to be a number between 0 and 1. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a probably mass function looks very similar to the probably mass function of a, bin, of a binomial. You're just effectively uh, scaling the domain. All right. So yeah, uh, that's what you get. Uh, x bar in this case um, is also... Uh, the sample proportion. We have talked about the sample proportion before and also said that a sample proportion is essentially a sample mean of data that's either 0 or 1. So that means that all of our discussions about the mean are also discussions about the sample proportion in large part. Oh, this, uh, oh, the typesetting was quite unfortunate here because uh, there needs to be much more space for this example. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can to make this work. Okay, so let x1, xn be iid random variables. x1 follows a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. What is the sampling distribution of x bar? Use the sampling distribution to find an interval such that the probability that, that um, this uh, that mu is in between the lower and upper bound of this interval both of those boundaries potentially depending on x bar um, the probability that this occurs is equal to 1 minus alpha all right so uh, I've talked about in uh, section 5 which as I said before I recommend you watch before uh, viewing this uh, video uh, we talked about uh, x bar, this is going to be a sum of normal random variables and the sum of normal random variables is going to be a normal random variable as well. So what is the expected value of x bar? We computed that in the section 5 video. Uh, so its mean is going to be mu, mu and its standard deviation is sigma over the square root of n. We also computed that in the section 5 video. All right, so um, this is going to be the standard deviation of x bar. Okay, so uh, based off of that, uh, we could say the following that the probability that um, x bar minus mu divided by sigma over root n, which uh, should be following a standard normal distribution, the probability that that is between z alpha over 2 and negative z alpha over 2. Okay, uh, this is going to equal 1 minus alpha because remember what z alpha over 2 um, is. Remember that from the video on the normal distribution. That is a the quantity of the standard normal uh, distribution where the probability of being above that number um, for a standard normal random variable is equal to uh, alpha over 2. And because of the symmetry of the standard normal distribution around 0, that means that being below negative z alpha over 2, that er so the probability of being there is also uh, alpha over 2. And as a consequence of that, the probability of being uh, outside of the region uh, enclosed by negative z alpha over 2 and z alpha over 2 
is going to equal uh, alpha. So the probability that you're in that region is going to be 1 minus alpha. Okay, then. Uh, so based off of this, uh, we what we would then do is take this uh, inequality and manipulate it until eventually we end up with mu in the middle. Uh, so we start manipulating this and say, all right, we'll start out with negative z alpha over 2 uh, is less than or equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over root n, uh, which is less than or equal to z alpha over 2. Okay, what are we going to do? Uh, the first thing we're going to do is multiply everything by the sig by sigma over root n and say, all right, we've got negative z alpha over 2 uh, times sigma over root n uh, is less than or equal to x bar minus mu, which is less than or equal to z alpha over 2 sigma over root n. All right, uh, next up, what are we going to do? Uh, let's flip the sign of, uh, let's multiply everything by negative one. If we multiply everything by negative one, all of these inequalities will change direction and uh, we'll change plus to minus and minus to plus and also switch uh, plus to minus in the middle. So in the end, the end result of all of that multiplication and rearrangement and stuff is actually that all you really need to change in the end is make this mu minus x bar. So then we will add x bar to everything. And say that we have x bar minus z alpha over 2 sigma over root n is less than or equal to mu, which is less than or equal to x bar plus uh, z alpha over 2 sigma over root n. As a result, we now have an interval where mu is in the middle. Mu is in the middle of this interval, which means that the lower bound is going to be x bar minus z alpha over 2 sigma over root n. So this quantity right here corresponds to L of x bar. This is a lower bound that depends on the sample mean. Um, and uh, we have an upper bound which is x bar plus z alpha over 2 sigma over root n. Uh, that depends on the sample mean as well. So that gets us our L of x bar and U of x bar. What we are essentially saying is that when you compute the sample mean, the probability that the true population mean mu is between this lower bound, which I have in the red box, and this upper bound, which I have in the green box, both of which depend on the sample mean, is equal to 1 minus alpha. Remember this interval, because this is actually a confidence interval. What I have shown you right now is how to find a confidence interval for a parameter. In this case, what I have done is use the sample mean and the distribution of the sample mean to obtain a confidence interval for the population mean. And confidence intervals are going to be um, uh, what we talk about uh, in chapter 7. Uh, in chapter 6, we're talking about point estimation, which is how you estimate a single, a single parameter like mu, like sigma, all those things. Whereas confidence intervals are how you describe how far away your estimates are from the truth, in a sense. So it's like the second uh, math, uh, the second statistics topic that we that we're going to talk about in this course, and then the third one will be hypothesis testing. Okay, um, so the first one is a, a point estimation. Second one is confidence intervals. Third is hypothesis testing. All right. Uh, so uh, we have the sampling distribution in special cases for certain statistics. Like for example, in those previous cases, we knew exactly what the distribution of the sample mean and the, um, well, okay, what this, the, the distribution of the sample mean was in the case of Bernoulli data and normal data. We knew its distribution exactly. In general, we cannot say that. Well, we can, 
we can say what the distribution looks like for large sample sizes, but we ca uh, cannot say what the distribution looks like exactly for a particular sample size. So one way to study the sampling distribution of statistics is to use what are known as simulations, where we generate uh, k random samples of size n on a computer. These are fictitious samples. Uh, we know the distribution of the data. Uh, we know what distribution the data came from. And then for each of those samples, we're going to compute our statistic of, of interest, um, which could be the sample mean, it could be the sample variance, it could be the median, it can be any statistic we want. And we're going to uh, do this for each of the fictitious samples that we did, and obtaining in the end fictitious statistics, simulated statistics. And then we study how these uh, statistics that we generated from random data be, uh, are behaving so that we can learn more about how they work. So for example, um, for the normal distribution, we are probably going to want to estimate uh, the mean parameter mu. And we actually have a couple ways we could do that because mu is both the mean and the median of the normal distribution. So it feels natural to either use the mean or the median. Both of those numbers could potentially be estimators for mu. So if that's the case, which one should we use? Uh, which one is better um, in a sense? What are the properties of these statistics? What are their respective shapes? Uh, which has a smaller variance? Um, because uh, st uh, the statistics themselves, their sampling distribution, it has a variance, um, or, or hopefully has a variance. And this variance describes how much or how far away that statistic is probably from the true value or from its mean. And ideally, we would like that variance to be small because a small variance could, we at least hope, uh, mean that the statistic is actually quite close to the truth. All right, so... Uh, we might want to uh, use uh, simulations to decide whether we should uh, use the mean or the median to try to estimate mu for normally distributed data, uh, since in general, those two numbers are not necessarily going to equal each other. So let's suppose that we have uh, data that's coming from a standard normal distribution, and we're going to conduct a simulation study to compare uh, the sample mean to the sample median we'll look at uh, the case when n equals 10 and we will use 1,000 uh, replicates. So we will use 1,000 simulated um, means and medians. So here's what I'm doing in R to do this because this is intensely computational. Uh, I create first using the replicate function. The replicate function is a function that will do some operation so many times. So in this case, do 1,000 times creating uh, a normal, uh, a, 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 an, an R vector of stimulated normal random variables of size 10. So do that 1,000 times. This will produce a matrix. Then compute the mean for each of the samples uh, in this data set. And we'll do so using the apply function. So compute the mean and the median for each of these samples. All right. And what I do next is construct a box plot comparing the uh, means and the medians. Now, we know that the true mean and the true median is equal to zero. All right. So the blue line corresponds to the truth. And it seems based off of these box plots, that um, that uh, the uh, that both of these statistics are essentially estimating the correct thing. They're both centered around the correct thing. The question then is, uh, which one varies less? And looking at these box plots, it seems that the box plot for the mean uh, is actually a bit more concentrated than the box plot for the median. 
it would suggest that the, the sample mean has a smaller variance of the sample median. And in fact, let's look at some summary statistics for our simulated means. Uh, so they had a mean of zero of, of about zero, a median of about negative 0 0.1, and, uh, they, and we've got some other uh, statistics to look at. Uh, let's look at the same summary for uh, the median and what I'm noticing for the median is when I'm looking at the minimum, the maximum, uh, the first and third quartiles, it seems as if the median at this sample size is more spread out. And if we were to look at the variances of these two uh, estimators in the simulated data, the variance of the, of the means was smaller than the variance of the medians. All right, that's nice. Um, actually, that's telling us a lot. That's telling us that it seems like the mean has a smaller uh, variance than the median. When uh, compute when uh, on a normal data, and since both of them appear to be correctly calibrated, that almost would suggest that we prefer the sample mean to the sample median, because we would prefer an estimator with a smaller variance to one with a larger variance, because that estimator varies less around the truth. Hopefully, uh, we're also interested in the distribution of these two quantities. And we know for a fact that the mean should be normally distributed, and uh, the uh, the QQ plot pretty much seems to confirm this. But let's look at the median and look at its uh, and look at its distribution relative to a normal distribution. And actually, it seems like the median is also following a normal distribution. Both of these statistics appear to follow a normal distribution, which is interesting. Um, and I know for a fact that the median does also follow a normal distribution when it's computed from normal data. Okay. Uh, next example. Uh, suppose now instead we're looking at data that's coming from a uniform distribution with minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Uh, what is the what can we say about the distribution of the sample mean u bar uh, as the sample size n gets large? And we're going to repeat this proceed. We're going to create 1,000 samples and compute uh, sample means from these samples. And we're going to do so um, for each of the sample sizes 5, 20, and 80. Okay. Uh, actually, I've also included two, apparently. So I included a sample size of two. So you took the mean of two numbers. All right. Uh, so what I do is I generate a bunch of data sets. Uh, so. Uh, for each size, what I do is I am going to use a function that depends on a parameter n that represents the sample size. And what I do is I create a sample of, um, of I, create, I create k samples, which is going to be 1,000 samples of length uh, n, each from a standard uniform distribution. Uh, I even gave these data sets size. Here's a summary of what we've got. Okay, so... Uh, what we end up with are matrices uh, that um, uh, contain uh, simulated data sets. So there's a thousand simulated data sets for this first matrix. Each of those data sets are of length 2. For the second one, they're of length 5. The third, they're length 20. And the fourth, they're of length uh, 80. And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, now compute the... Uh, means of each of these data sets by applying to this list of data sets the function that computes uh, means for each of the data sets. And what we end up with is another list, this list containing uh, all of the sample means for each of those data sets. And then we are going to, for each of those data sets, print a summary of those data sets, uh, print a histogram of those data sets, add a density plot uh, for those data sets, uh, well, actually not a density plot. Uh, it's, well, yeah, it is a density plot, but it's a density plot of the corresponding normal distribution. Um, and, uh, we're also going to create a QQ plot. So in the case where the sample size was two, uh, we have a histogram of, uh, sample means and a core and a matching 
uh, normal distribution for comparison. Here are the statistics of that of the uh, of the sample of the uh, simulated sample means where they seem to be centered around the right quantity because we know that the mean is 0 0.5. So they seem to be centered around the right thing. Uh, they appear to have uh, the uh, uh, yeah everything about them seems to be appropriate. Um, so uh, if we were to plot. Uh, make a QQ plot for these means, though, um, we're comparing against the normal distribution. And this QQ plot suggests that these means are not normally distributed because of the uh, because of the S shape that we see in the QQ plot. Uh, and studying in particular that S shape, it seems that the normal distribution has tails that are heavier than what we would expect if the data actually did come from uh if the data did actually come uh, from a normal distribution as if these means were actually normally distributed um and it's not too shocking that the means themselves are not normally distributed in as in, the, in at least the case uh the, the sample size is two because a normal random variable uh can take any number between negative infinity and infinity but if you're but uh in this case the sample mean is going to be a number between zero and one uh, since it's being computed from uniform data. All right. Uh, let's next look at the case where... The, before what we saw was the case where... Oops. Um, all of this stuff is for the case when uh, n equals 2. Okay. Uh, next, let's consider the case uh, where n equals 5. And everything looks better. Uh, let's look at the minimum and the maximum and the quartiles. It looks to me like uh, uh, the first quartile is larger and the third quartile is uh, smaller than what it was when n was equal to 2, which suggests that when you increase the sample size, the mean has gotten smaller, or, or the mean's spread has gotten smaller. Um, the mean and the median appear to be appropriate numbers. And actually, if you were to look at a histogram of the means and compare it to uh, a normal distribution, the means actually look a little bit more normally distributed. And if we construct a QQ plot comparing the sample means to a normal distribution, and this is actually surprises me to some extent, that it looks like a normal distribution works very well. Which, actually, to me, that fact doesn't surprise me. What does surprise me is that it seems to work well when n equals 5. Like, it's, it's, it's a little shocking to me that this uh, normal distribution, that, that the sample means when n equals 5 actually are starting to look rather normally distributed because this looks like a straight line. Right? Okay, and now we look in the case when n equals 20. Uh, the first quartile is uh, larger than what it was before. The third quartile is smaller. So we're getting closer and closer concentration. The mean and the median are really close to 0.5, which we know to be the truth. And even the minimum and the maximum are starting to get uh, more concentrated around 0.5. And if we were to construct a histogram, uh, that histogram is now starting to look a lot like a normal distribution. If we construct a QQ plot, that QQ plot looks almost like the QQ plot of normally distributed random data. So the data is starting to look really normal, as in it's following a normal distribution. And if we look at n equals 80, now the minimum and the maximum are in fact quite close to 0.5. Remember, this is the minimum and the maximum. So the data is starting to really concentrate around 0.4. Like, we are now looking at numbers that were more comparable to the, like, like the first and third quartile almost looked like the mean and the median in the case when the sample size was two, and the minimum and the maximum look like the first and third quartile when the sample was the two. And the median and mean are both very close to 0.5. If we look at a histogram, a normal distribution seems to hit, fit that histogram very well. In a QQ plot, the data is looking normally distributed even though 
the data is of uh, uniform. Uh, so the data came from a uniform distribution. These sample means of uniformly distributed random variables cannot be be cannot go beyond zero or one. It is impossible. So they are not normally distributed, and yet they are. It looks as if a normal distribution describes very well the behavior of these sample means. So it's almost as if it doesn't really matter that a normal distribution is any number between negative infinity and infinity, and these sample means are numbers between 0 and 1. These sample means are almost essentially normally distributed. And that's kind of a remarkable fact. So, and that's going to be the subject of the uh, of uh, section 4. And I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, ponder this, and I will see you in the next section.